All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at population growth and demographics. This presentation will help you understand human population growth, how human population, affluence, and technology affect the environment, the IPAT model, demographics, and we'll take a look at demographic transitions in developing countries. I'd like you to read the central case at the beginning of chapter eight. It's about China's one-child policy. And, um, and ask yourself as you're reading it, how did the Chinese government encourage one child only? Was it through incentives? Was it through punishments? How did they do this? And was this policy fair? Do you think China or any government for that matter has the right to punish individuals for having more than one child? Why or why not? We know that world population has risen sharply since the, the mid-1700s due to the Industrial Revol Revolution. Global human population was less than 1 billion only about 200 years ago. Today it's approaching 7 billion people. Global population has doubled since the mid-1960s, and we add 2.5 people every second. Where is this growth happening the fastest? Where we see red are areas of greatest growth, or countries of greatest growth, well, regions within countries, and white is actually declining. Uh, actually, white is declining fast, and gray is declining also. Zero is um, mild growth. So for one, we can see that in South America, and in Africa, we see large population growth rates. We actually see declining population growth rates in Europe, many parts of Europe, Spain, regions of France, definitely here in Eastern Europe, Scandinavia for sure, and large areas of the former Soviet Union. In the U.S. here, um, we can see that there is still high population growth in the southwest. And um, Canada is experiencing population decline in many regions as well. So we should know that global growth peaked at 2.1% in the 1960s. That's when the population was growing the fastest. It has now declined to 1.1%. Is population growth really a problem? This is a debatable topic, and we will debate it. What ties in here, though, is the IPAT model. It shows how population, affluence, and technology interact to create impact on our environment. Can green technology help lessen our impact on the environment? Having more fuel-efficient cars, more energy-efficient lighting, things like this. Do we need to lessen our affluent lifestyles? What would you be willing to let go of if it meant a healthier environment? We can model population and its consequences. This is kind of an FYI. I'm not going to quiz you on this. But I want you to take a look at two things, because this is a key point. We see that population is in dark red. And since 1900, population has risen. And this is where we are now. Now, what's going to happen at this point? We don't know. But um, we do see, however, um, food right here. Notice how food closely parallels the changes in population. And um, we're saying here, according to this graph, that our food production is getting more difficult, and that's true. So how's that going to affect our population? Will that trend continue? Technology has increased Earth's carrying capacity for humans, but can this be sustained through tool making, through agriculture, a form of technology, through industrialization, we have continually been able to provide for more and more number of humans on this planet. Can we keep it up? So part of this, part of the answers to that question lie in demography, the study of human populations. We often refer to it as just demographics. But human populations exhibit the same fundamental characteristics as do populations of all other organisms. Things like population size. Here is a list of the top most populated um, countries, and you need to know the top five. China, India, US, Indonesia, and Brazil. What, are, what about future projections? We know right now that the population is about 7 billion. What will it be in the future? We would love to know. If the current fertility rate, the number of children being born to every woman alive, continues at the same rate it is today, and we expect the population is going to be about 11.7 billion by 2050. However, 
as countries become more developed, the number of children born to each woman declines. So we know that this rate is not going to keep up. Now, how much will it decrease by? These are three different models. And our middle model here is showing that population will stabilize around 9 billion. Time will tell. We do know that global, gro global growth rates have fallen. So that peak happening in mid-1960s, 1965, right here, 2.1%. That's when the population was getting faster, the fast, sorry, getting bigger, the fastest. Since then, the rate of population growth has declined. And here we are, right around 2013, and today's growth rate is 1.1%. So population is still increasing, but more slowly. What about population density and distribution? This is another way to characterize populations. We see well, what areas are most densely populated and why do you think this is? If you take a look at Europe, or I mean um, Eurasia, we can see high population rates in Europe, especially um, Central Europe, and of course Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia being the most densely populated part of the, part of the world. And in the US, um, the eastern seaboard is more densely populated um, than, the, than the west, generally speaking. Areas in the middle here, the mountainous regions, have much, much lower population density. But generally speaking, people like to live along the coast. That's where you can have better commerce, better trading. Um, you have the ocean as a source for, for fish and for food. Now we're going to transition over to looking at age structure. Um, this is another way to characterize populations. On the left here is Canada. Um, I think this is from like 2005. So we can see that at the, we can see it's, it's going through a big and interesting transition because fewer and fewer um, children are being born. And so you actually have the greatest number of people in their population are middle aged. And um, there's a smaller number of young people to provide for these older people. But on the right side, we see Madagascar, which is a country growing nine times faster. So here we see a large base, which is typical of fast-growing countries. And these here are the pre-reproductive years, zero, age 0 to 15. The orange is reproductive years, and the um, yellow is post-reproductive years. So even though these are pre-reproductive now, in 15 more years, they will have shifted up into the reproductive years. So this base that's wide here is going to be wide here. And if they have a, babies at a fast rate, this base is going to get even wider. So this indicates a country that is in a trend that's growing quickly. And these are snapshots in time. So this is China in 2005, and you can see that their one-child policy has been effective at reducing the number of children being born. Their bulge is in the middle age. But what would this look like in 2013 projected? We would expect this bulge to move up here. And so this is one way we can use age structure diagrams to predict changes that will come to a population in the future. So we call this a graying population where you have um, a larger number of older people than you do younger people. And many elderly and few young workers means less tax money for social services for retirees. So it can really, it can really wreak some havoc on, on the country's economy. In our country, we saw the baby boomer generation, which um, they were born when soldiers came back from World War II. Um, and um, today they're in their 60s. So this is the bulge that represents them. And as uh, in another 10 years, you know, this bulge will have moved up. And, um, and one of our concerns with economically is how do we provide care to this aging baby boomer population who are starting to retire, who are going to be going on social security benefits, Medicare benefits, things that retired people get to provide their health care and their food and their money.